Okay, the alternative to Newton's corpuscular theory was Huygens' principle. Huygens said that every point on a wavefront acts as a source of secondary wavelets, and that these secondary wavelets spread out in the forward direction at the speed of the wave. The new wavefront is the surface that is tangential to all of these secondary wavelets. For example, in this picture here. So you can see this is the initial wavefront over here, and each point on that wavefront acts as a source of secondary wavelets and when you add up these secondary wavelets you superpose them you get the same wavefront but a few seconds later and that is how the wave moves in the forward direction so you can see here it doesn't have to spread out in the par parallel wavefronts like that you can spread out spherically like that okay so Huygen was able to successfully explain reflection using his principle so here you've got a picture diagram showing when the wavefront touches the boundary at this reflective surface, it's emitting wavelets, and these wavelets are superposing to produce a new wavefront. And the new wavefront is traveling and is obeying the law of reflection, meaning that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will be the same. He was also able to explain refraction. So as you can see in this diagram here, in this case, however, it's different from Newton's corpuscular theory because here Huygen predicted that the wave would be slower in more dense medium which is correct of course and which was measured a lot later but his theory was able to successfully explain that and also unlike Newton he was able to explain diffraction so you can see the wave here going through a gap and spreading out that's what diffraction is spreading out through a gap or, an, or past an obstacle he was also able to explain superposition and interference so here, every point that's going through this gap is acting as a source of secondary wavelets. And this will produce an interference pattern on any screen that's placed over here. This is a, a single slit, but of course he predicted it with a double slit as well, which is shown by Young much later. So here we've got, unlike Newton, who predicted only two fringes being formed, he predicted the existence of multiple fringes. Of course, the dark fringes being formed when the, the waves meet at a odd multiple of pi, in other words, um, out of phase with each other because of the path difference, and the bright fringes being formed when they're in phase with each other because of an even multiple of pi phase difference. However, Huygen wasn't completely correct. He predicted that light was longitudinal. So in other words, he thought light, the via oscillations were in parallel to the direction of energy transfer. So in other words, compression of the refractions on a, like, like on a spring, which means that it wouldn't be polarized. But we know this is not true. Light can be polarized. Light is actually a transverse waves, which if it doesn't go through the right plane, if it doesn't oscillate in the right plane, it, it can be stopped by a Polaroid. So he got this wrong, and, that was, and then after a long time, he, they were able to uh, correct this. So despite Huygens principle being able to explain a lot more, it wasn't accepted and never trusted Newton because of, he had a much higher, better reputation because of all of these previous successful theories. And even when they did Young's double slit experiment, they showed that light can diffract and interfere. People still trusted Newton. It wasn't until much later, 100 years later, that when they measured the speed of light in a, in a more denser medium like water, and they showed that it is slower in water, unlike Newton who predicted it would be faster, that's when people started believing Huygens' principle.